U.S. scores what could be an important victory in the war against the Taliban. The CIA, along with Pakistani intelligence agents, captured Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar in Karachi earlier this month. Baradar has been the Taliban's top military commander for more than three years, and the hope is he will provide high-value information about the Taliban and possibly Osama bin Laden. Baradar's capture also signals a new chapter in the relationship between the U.S. and Pakistan. For more now, we're joined by CBS News consultant Jerry Van Dyke. Good morning. Good morning. How big of a capture is this in I the grand the, scheme? I think the important word here is when you said could. We okay. don't know the truth. What we do know that he comes from Erzgan province, which is the same, or Erzgan province, which is just above Kandahar, the same place that Mullah Omar comes from. They fought together during the 1980s against the Soviet Union. Most interestingly, he comes from the Papazoi clan of the Pashtuns. The Papazois have provided all the kings of Afghanistan since its inception. President Karzai is a Papazoi. Newsweek had an article not so long ago where it said that very possibly that he has been engaging, engaging in negotiations very secretly with President Karzai. President Karzai has denied this. What is very interesting, though, is that Pakistan has on occasion coughed up, if you will, certain number two people in the Taliban. It was Batullah Massoud, then became Hekmatullah Massoud, both from Waziristan, and now we have Mullah Abdul Ghani. Bahadur. Bahadur, by the way, is a Dari word. It's a Persian word and it means brother, which is highly unusual for a Pashtun, and the main language is Pashto of the Pashtuns, would take a name of another person or of another language entirely. So some people have said that he's possibly even from Pakistan. We don't really know because the Pakistanis have been with working very closely, the intelligence agencies have been working very closely with the Taliban since the 1990s. Is he a, a Pashtun from, from Pakistan? And of course, more, there are more Pashtuns in Pakistan than there are in Afghanistan. So it's, it's quite murky. We really don't know what is going to happen. Here. And so what can we interpret right now from Pakistan's moves in, in coughing up this number two man? What does this mean in the grand scheme? If it is true and if he can provide information on Mullah Omar and most importantly for the United States, the Al-Qaeda leadership, Osama bin Laden and Ayman al-Zawahari, it would mean a sea change in Pakistani foreign policy. Since Pakistan's inception in 1947, it has tried to divide the Pashtuns and has used them particularly very religious elements of the Pashtuns to fight its foreign policy. They used them to fight in Kashmir in 1948. They used him with the United States in the 1980s to fight against the Soviet Union. And in 1994, with Saudi Arabia, they helped to foster, they certainly did not create, but helped to foster the Taliban. And Pakistan was only one of three countries, along with Saudi Arabia and the United Emirates, to give diplomatic recognition to the Taliban. So now they're going to give up this entire policy. Now, the reason they have this policy is because Pakistan's policy is twofold. One, to prevent India from attacking in the east and from being surrounded by India in Afghanistan. And secondly, to prevent the Pashtuns, great who have controlled all the way up to the Indus River, which is right in the center of Pakistan, from reasserting themselves. So by giving up on this, this goal, by saying that we're going to work with the Pashtuns, it means they're going to change their entire foreign policy. Is this going on beside, behind the scenes? Is this something that the United States and Pakistan are talking about? We will find out in the weeks ahead. If the war continues and it goes on for the next year or two, we will know that this again is once again a number two leader in the Taliban, a number three in Al-Qaeda, who have come up, we have killed them, and then someone has replaced them, and the war has have gone on. So really on both sides. Now, what about, let's turn to the offensive in Marja. How is this related? And then uh, what can we expect as we move forward in that, in that area? It's related in that apparently Mullah Baradar has told various commanders before he was captured in this area in Helmand, along the Helmand River there, not just in Majra, but along the river entirely, do not fight. If you feel that you're going to lose your soldiers, he's talked to his commanders, pull back. Okay. So now what we have is that he has been captured. This is a tremendous psychological blow to the Taliban in this area. What, this, what we have to look forward to in the future here, though, is that Secretary of Defense Robert Gates and the President of the United States, President Obama, have both said that there's ultimately there's a political solution to this war. General McChrystal has, has gone along and said the same thing. In order to do this, what, General, what Secretary of Defense Gates has said, that we are going to degrade the Taliban. We're not going to destroy them. Our goal is to destroy al-Qaeda. But ultimately, the goal is to win over, to use the phrase from Vietnam, the hearts and minds of the people of Afghanistan. The people in this area, 
in Helmand Province, and I worked in this area in the 1980s as a newspaper reporter, look at Kabul in the north in the, as much as they would look at Washington, D.C. They have nothing in common with the people in the north. <clears throat> entirely different language, entirely different culture practically, and now we are going to import, if you will, a democratic form of government to this particular area. The United States, its 15,000 soldiers and Marines are going to pull back. Who's going to be there? the Afghan National Army. The Afghan National Army is comprised, and there are many problems with the Afghan National Army, is primarily from Tajiks from the north who speak Dari. This is almost an alien occupying force. It's not going to be so easy for them to come in and be accepted. Okay. Also, one final small point, and it's not really that small, is that there was this errant NATO attack that killed about 15 civilians, according to the CBS News. Now, every child that is killed, her uncle, her father, her brother, her cousin, is fodder for the Taliban. And lastly, during the 1980s, what happened was that the Soviet Union and the Mujahideen both laced the country with mines. Many children have been killed in the 1980s and since then because they go out and play. The Taliban have also laced this entire area with mines. And that's something that soldiers have been dealing with. The soldiers have been dealing with. The soldiers will leave, the children will stay. If anything happens, they will blame not just the Taliban, but the infidel invader. All right, CBS News consultant Jerry Van Dyke. Jerry, we really appreciate your insight. Thank you.